Hello, my name is Andrea and I work in the Visual C++ cross-platform team. I am going to demo today how the Makefile Tools extension in VS Code can help the C++ developers working in repositories built with Make and Makefiles. Let's open a code base as folder in VS Code. I chose a very popular open source project, Core Utils. As you can see, there are defines unresolved, includes not found, especially if outside the workspace, and various syntax complaints. That is because the CPP Tools extension, which is the smart and powerful engine behind the IntelliSense calculations, did not receive any hints about compiler defines, include paths, or CC++ standard in CCPP properties JSON or its alternatives. So this is the role of the Makefile Tools extension to help the developer not need to go through a complicated setting and setup process, to automatically parse and make deductions from the build system and send all the missing pieces to CPP Tools for it to provide accurate intelligence. Let me explain briefly the configure process. This is an inquiry we are doing under the covers. We launch make with a few crucial arguments so that we obtain the most useful and verbose output while not changing the state of the project, and we parse all we need from that output. Dry run lists without executing all the commands that would be run. Print directory lists folder as they are traversed by shell commands or make itself, helping us calculate the current full path at any moment. Always make and keep going together ensure we don't lose completeness due to up-to-date status or errors. Unfortunately, as other few projects we've encountered, Core Utils needs to remove always make because together with dry run it causes some configure targets to be infinitely run. To avoid incomplete intelligence in this case, you must load the project one time from a clean state or with all source files out of date. To configure, I am using the palette, but it can also happen automatically at project load, unless you explicitly set not to. You can see in the extension output channel logging being printed about what we found useful in the dry run log what we parse and send to CPP tools. Now let's see the effects of the configure phase. Most errors disappeared from the problems tab, except the outside header. For that, I wrote two make file configurations using make args to point towards the outside headers path. Let's go to the extension UI panel on the left sidebar and select default config first. Let the extension reconfigure. I also make sure the binaries will be built with debug info, require a GCC problem matcher to populate the problems tab during the build, and also the second configuration has one additional define that is used throughout this code base. The header was found. Now let's select the other configuration and see how this if dev block will change highlight. As before, the extension is doing a reconfigure. See the bottom right status pop-up and the logging messages in the output channel tab. The only difference from the previous default configuration is that gnulib POSIX check will be defined with a value of 2. Let's toggle the configuration again to undefine gnulib POSIX check since it's causing some build breaks. Now, the extension is able to parse and offer for selection all the separate targets defined in the makefile. The phony only targets setting is useful to filter out all the automatic implicit rules or targets that are associated with a single file. For a large project, it helps not seeing hundreds of OBJs and tens of libs in the target's quick pick. Even when no target is identified, the all is always available. Let's choose all for now. As before, this triggers a reconfigure, during which we can inspect more settings. Let's see here a few scenarios of variable expansion that we support starting with the 070 release. Classic VS Code variable workspace folder, 
make file tools new variables we defined for configuration and build target plus their commands counterparts config syntax for accessing another setting. Let's explore the dev folder and see these files. And this is how compile commands looks like for POSIX configuration and target all. Let's see what launch targets we identified. The code base builds a bunch of useful tools and programs. Let's choose date. See how the extension wrote a launch target entry for me. I want to debug the date command and the extension also triggers a build, which fails, but in a different program, so I'm going to ignore and continue. The breakpoint was hit. Let's also run in the terminal. Same, we are going to continue and ignore the build failure. We can see the today's date in the terminal window. Let's try another program, ideally one that also accepts parameters. I am choosing echo. The stop at entry setting is very useful when the source code or main entry point is not handy for me to place a breakpoint. Let's also add two parameters using variable expansion. And if we search in the quick pick, we see the variables expanded already. What if I want to pass the variables not expanded to the tool? I can use an escaped pattern. We can see now echo printing the variables not expanded. As many other projects, Core Utils needs to run Bootstrap and Configure at the beginning and occasionally to refresh its prerequisites and state. I started the demo on a fresh state after running them. The Makefile Tools extension has the Makefile preconfigure script setting to point to a script that can collect all such commands and or scripts in one place and the command preconfigure to invoke this step either on demand or before each configure if all is preconfigure is true. This is going to last for two or three minutes so I'm going to wrap up here. Thanks everyone for watching this video and see you on GitHub.